Ah, oh, you beautiful bastards, and welcome back to another Pixel Podcast with your amazing host of the most, Danny Deceptive Cobras Monahan. And today, we are going to be talking to two fellow uh, war pigs, uh, J-Man1606. I'm here. <laughs> and uh, Jack, a.k.a. Pandemics. Hello. Hello, and we are going to be trying to give our best takes on the new uh, Heroes and Generals Adams update. I personally did a uh, a video on this, giving my personal take on it. So what I would like to do is I'd like to get Jack's and J-Man's perspective on uh, uh, what they feel. And uh, I want to, I'm, I'm just going to bring up a couple of questions and get some feedback from them. And um, then, guys, if you want to ask us any, ask and ask, ask any questions, learn to speak, Cobra, uh, leave them in the comment section of the video down below. So first things first. Uh, Jack, overall, what do you think about the new uh, Adams update? Yeah, good. I like the new uh, mobile IAs. I think it's good. Hopefully, we'll be able to, um, at some point, it'll be nice to uh, switch out the uh, like the gun for like uh, transport, so like seats and stuff. That'll be good. Well, that's what the APC's for, though, isn't it? Yeah, they said about they might be adding, you know, like the, uh, what's it called, the German one? Mm-hmm. They might be... Uh, they said in the dev stream they might be changing it out for uh, so you can be able to switch between the AA gun and the seats and such. That would be pretty awesome. Though. Oh, yeah, yeah. So basically cramming two into one. Okay. Uh, J-Man, yeah. your take on the Adams update. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Uh, I'm a huge fan of using the semi-automatic rifles, so I believe that the additions of, well, basically buffing them mm-hmm. is really, really necessary. Yep. Well, you know, you know my stance on it. I mean, for crying out loud, my last two live streams, I've done, I've used nothing but the M1 gear, and then you guys have seen me rack up kills after kills after kills with it. Uh, and the fact that we can now get the Scout two barrel for the M1 gear and or the Gewehr forty three or, or the SVD forty, I honestly feel that it was about time that the semi autos actually got some bloody love. I really do. Um, but one of the things that 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 has happened that I, I I did touch on a little bit, which was the ribbon balancing, the fact that they've now mo- made a hand grenades an unlock on the assault on the infantry assault line. I uh, I think it's a good a good thing, especially for new players who are just joining the game. But at the same time, I think it's a bad thing because if you think about it, veteran players who go on the encounter game map just just to bully. You know, other players purposely are doing that, knowing that they don't have grenades. You know what I mean? I also think that they, you know, there's all six. You see, this is the thing. In Heroes and Generals, if you look at your player profile, there's actually a player tier system now. Tier 0, you can only play in counter mode. Tier 1, you can play skirmish and encounter game modes. And Tier 2, you can play all game modes against other Tier 2 players. But that doesn't stop a Tier 2 player from playing Tier 0 and just wiping the floor with uh, Tier 0 soldiers who have just joined the game. I think that just like the tier system, once you've reached Tier 1, you can no longer fight Tier tier 0. You can only fight Tier 2. You have to punch your way up, not punch your way down. You see what I'm saying? I would have to say that I slightly disagree. Mm -hmm. Just a tiny bit. That's mainly just segregating the community isn't a very good idea. Well, I, Even and, if it is for the better of the experience for other people. But you see, you see, this is the thing. They keep saying about how they have like 5 million players. If you have 5 million players, we're not seeing it in the matchmaker. We're just not, you know? Um, now, tank rebalancing. A lot of people keep saying that they need to rebalance the tanks. They need to, to take a look at the tanks and... and Show them a little bit of balance and a little bit of love, a little bit of nerfs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. How would you go around about doing that, J-Man? Uh, well, I just find it it's, it's a little difficult to do that because just the way that they have the game set up already baked on is it's, as I mentioned before, that it's a realistic game. Well, it's an unrealistic game with realistic elements to it. Uh-huh. So balancing stuff like that can be... Really, really, really tough. But I think one one thing that I know is that I believe that tank destroyers should have high explosive rounds completely removed. Oh yeah, oh yeah, because they were designed so to hunt tanks, not take on infantry. Take tanks, not yeah, infantry. yeah. What about you, uh, pandemics? What about the uh, tank balance? Yeah, how how would you bring balance to the tanks? 
Uh, they could add like a proper Tyrion sister to like the actual multiplayer, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you don't get up tiered and stuff like that. You have to stay within your rank range. Yeah. That so, range, say you've got like from two to five. Uh huh. So you've got like that another game, like five again, sort of. See, like, I yeah. the way I would balance tanks is you only unlock specific tanks in that battle per player in the game. For example, if you've got under say five players, no heavy tanks. Period. No medium tanks, period. Light tanks, yes. No tank destroyer, you know what I mean? Eight players, yes. Medium tanks and tank destroyers. For for, And yet, another thing, for example, if you see that one side is very medium tank heavy, okay, you limit the amount of medium tanks. I.e., uh, they've got five players who play medium tanks. Okay, put two of them in it. Put two, put two or two or three of them in a deploy queue, so that they end up changing what they're playing from a medium tank to an infantryman or a recon or or a paratrooper. Do you see what I'm saying? I I feel that that's one way that you could bring somewhat balance uh, uh, to it, um, which is the more players in the game, the bigger the tank you can take. So player, player tank ratio. Kind it, of thing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Also with with, with uh, uh, jeeps and APCs. If you've got under five people, no APCs, just jeeps. Yep. If you have more than five people, APCs. You know, uh, motorcycles even. No, and I know that's gonna. Uh, uh, and, and see, this is another thing. Um, I would classify the recon vehicles like the the. The uh, Greyhound and the German 222 and the Soviet recon vehicles, I would treat them as tank destroyers. Yeah. I would treat them a, 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 as tanks because that's what they are. They have a cannon that legally, that technically makes them a tank. Plain and simple. So the first thing you... Wheels. It doesn't matter if they've got tracks or wheels. I mean, still, even by today's standards, there are several uh, tank destroyers that are wheeled, not tracked. Yep. And so, it's like separated. Now, now, and and and, and I'm going to make a, a, an observation here, and I would li- again, I would like your feedback one at a time. Do you think that they should add a flying tutorial to the game? I would say yes. Um, reasoning why being, there's a lot of people who would obviously be like, oh look, aircraft, I want to fly airplanes, and then the only way you can practice that is actual active matches where that's costing people money. So I don't see why you wouldn't allow people to, you know, practice that side of the actual game. Mm-hmm. What about you, uh, Pandemic? Yeah, I agree, because it's very different from most flight sims to fly. Yeah. Uh, like, the controls are very different from War Thunder, IL-2, DC, like any other thing. I, so. you know, I, I, I would like to see a tutorial but at the same time i'd also like to see some pop-ups some hard pop-ups yeah. while you're flying press space bar to drop your bomb this if you're playing yeah a, 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 a flying tutorial would help same as a tank tutorial a tank tutorial would help these little things so yeah just, it, it's just those small little tiny things that would help i mean you've got a tutorial for infantrymen ranging from uh, 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 EOD weapons all the way up to freaking sniper rifles. You know, you cover recon, infantry, and designated roles, but you're not covering fighter pilot and tanker. It wouldn't. It really would not be that hard to modify the training level so that you're flying around in that BF 109. You know what I mean? Or, or mm-hmm. that Panzer three or that Sherman yep. or, or whatever. You know, it, it really would. It re- now. Granted, to some, it might be hard, like like coding-wise, but I honestly feel that the game desperately needs a training tutorial for fighter pilots. Same as it needs a tutorial for, for paratroopers. You know, because lo- learning... Well, I mean, yeah, granted, some of the best ways to learn is trial by fire. I get that. I really do get that. But not when it costs you 50,000 credits to re- repair your plane. Not yeah, not many people... Ha- exactly. Ha- honestly, how long does it is it going to take you to grind 50,000 credits to, replay- to repair that plane? 
Do you see what I'm saying? It, it costs you a fucking arm and a leg. Yeah, it would. Especially if you just got it and that's your first country and you don't have too much money. Like like me, I, I bought my pilot with gold. I bought my Soviet pilot with gold, okay? Don't ask me how to fuck to fly because I'm completely clueless. I took it out once. Once. And even using uh, uh, Old Man Smithers' uh, tutorials, links will be in the video description, by the way, guys, um, I I still couldn't figure out how the fuck to fly the goddamn thing. Hold control for dev controls. Well, what's dev controls? Do you see what I'm saying? It, 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 nothing goes into grave detail as to what this, that, or the other does. You know what I mean? And... and they're making all they're, they're, they're making all the maps nice and fluffy and cute and whatnot, but they're still ignoring the great big turd in the living room, the elephant in in, in, in the living room. You know what I mean? Which is, no one's gonna fly planes that are not a veteran at flying the plane without at least a freaking tutorial. Okay, if you really want your your player base to grow, throw freaking tutorials in. You know. Uh, 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 sponsor YouTube channels that, that put your content up. You know, say, look, uh, here's a sneak peek at some upcoming weapons. You know, just show them pictures of it. Let that guy do, do like... Exactly. Let the guy do a picture slide uh, uh, of the gun, hit what he, his hopes, damage, recoil, etc., etc. You know what I mean? Get That way you can get honest feedback from your player base before you put it on the test server and put too much freaking emphasis on your poor fucking coders who have to code it and bring it into the game. I mean, think about it. All on the live. For, for, for example, okay, Xbox Ahoy. He got an advanced copy of Modern Warfare 3, okay? So, lo and behold, before the game even went into a freaking open beta for testing or closed beta for testing, he's already got gun guides up. You know what I mean? And weapons guides and, and map guides and everything else and whatnot. And that, honestly, that made me want to play the game even more. You know, it really did. You got streamers like myself and Cotton and Old Man Smithers and, 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 and freaking motherfucking Stroop and, and Be Fine and, and, you know, that, that put a lot of time, energy and even money uh, uh, at some points into the game. Why not give us a little, uh, 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 I'm not saying uh, 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 give us some insider information. No, 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 no. What I'm saying to you is, okay, this is potentially what we're thinking of adding to the game. Give us your feedback. You know? Yeah, because many other games do that. Like, cards, like you said, GTA is just like, try to get it, like, you know, before it's an update or anything major's released. Yeah. The public, basically. Yeah. Feedback. Exactly. They, they, they try to give the feedback wherever they can. And see, that that's what really fucking just drives me nuts, man. It really does. Because Heroes and Generals doesn't do it. Yes, they're only, they're only a developer in size of like 30 people. 30 people is what makes this game. 30, that's all. 30. I think so far they've done an amazing job. They have. They have done an amazing job so far. Okay. Yes, in previous podcasts and in previous live streams, I've pissed, moaned, and complained. We've all yeah. done our fair share of pissed, moaning, and complaining about whatever game we're playing. Yeah, any game. It doesn't matter. It, it's exactly. Rage. It doesn't matter. And I've really got to give Reed to a, a, a clap, you know, a, a slow golf clap here, you know, for yeah. their their what they've actually done so far for the game. Um, I think that. They could maybe tweak um, how they handle the veteran stuff. Granted, giving us a little bit more credits, a little bit more more uh, EXP and whatnot is great. The badges, though, <sighs> what does mean when it comes to the combat badges and how, how veteran players can have two badges over regular players, yeah, that's going to entice people to get veterancy. It really is. But adding the extra equipment slot, no. I, I think giving them only three, uh, giving us players only three equipment slots is more than fine. The reason why I say that is most builds that you're going to do, you're going to run out of equipment points before you run out of equipment slots. And you think I'm joking, but I'm not. Seriously, think about it, okay? Let, 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 let's, let, let's use an infantryman as an example, okay? 
An infantryman has 10 slots, right? Your semi your semi auto rifle with one pouch, which is 80 rounds, it is five points. So you've got five points left to spend, okay? What are you going to spend it on? A pistol? That's two points, right? So you, you now got three points left to spend, okay? So you're going to get an, uh, 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 landmines, okay? Cheapest anti tank you can. That's three points. Ta da! You're now maxed out at 10 points. But wait, you've got an extra slot. What are you going to fill it with? Nothing. You can't. Do you see what I'm saying? I, I honestly think that the fourth slot is just a waste. Because no one... Uh, uh, unless you purposely go grenades, 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 pistol. And then you become Bomberman. And you wonder why you're not making any money. Well, you're throwing it literally. You're literally taking your wallet and throwing it at people saying, here, take my money. Here, take my money. You know what I mean? Yep. And, and, and the unlock system. You know what I would like to do for an unlock system as, as, a, as a change? I'm thinking once you've maxed out a ribbon, for example, again, I'm, I'm going to use my unknown soldier here, who has maxed out his SMG assault, okay, which is four-star gold. I'm thinking maybe there should be an option that where you toggle it at a 50% reduction, okay, so it's, it's reduced EXP. You can then assign that EXP you would normally get using SMGs to another combat ribbon, like infantry assault. Yeah, you could convert it. Yeah, or, 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 yeah, do you see what I'm saying? At, at a reduced EXP rate. But you can only use it within the realms. For example, physical, okay? You can take some combat. If you've maxed out your, your combat movement and you want to start grinding up your physical training, you activate that toggle. All your combat movement EXP at a reduced rate goes towards your physical training now. And then your combat, okay? Like I said, you take some of your SMG assault at a reduced rate and you put it towards infantry assault or LMG assault. Same as your explosives. You take your explosives at a reduced rate and put it towards your tank destruction. Do you see what I'm saying? Same as driver and chauffeur. Say you've maxed out driver but not chauffeur. You can take some of that EXP you'd get as a driver at a reduced rate. And it will go over. And it will go over to the chauffeur. Do you see what I'm saying? I, I, I think that would be a really fun way of leveling up things to help speed up stuff. Do it for veterans, you know? So a veteran can actually do that. A regular soldier can't do it. It's only a veteran thing. Do you see what I'm saying? Is that not a smart idea, Jay? I'd like that. That, that would put more emphasis on wanting to get that besides the small. Exactly. Do you see, it, it would put a lot of emphasis on saying, you know what, I've maxed out my SMG, but I really want to get that M1, M2 carbine. But I really don't want to go back to using a bolt action or a semi-auto because you've got your soldiers set up with like fast reload or whatever. But that toggle takes up a badge slot. Do you see what I'm saying? It, it actually... I'd still be okay with that. Exactly. Do you see what I'm saying? I would still be okay with that because I'd still have my heavy set and then I'd have my EXP re my EXP replacement badge. Do you see what I'm saying? It makes sense because think about it. Okay, I'm using my Thompson. Okay, my Thompson is maxed out. I love my Thompson. Why would I ever go back to my M1 Garand if I've got a Thompson? Do you see? You wouldn't. Most soldiers don't go back once they've unlocked a specific weapon. For example, the the Browning automatic. You're not going to go back to using a pistol because you're happy using your Browning Automatic. You know your Browning Automatic. You know how it works, the recoil, the spread, everything. You love the sound. You know what I mean? You're, you're just happy with it. Do you, just, do you see what I'm saying? So, But you really want to get that M1, M2 carbine. So this is what you do. Toggle your EXP, your, your EXP uh, 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 exchange badge. You pick what you're exchanging, SMG for infantry assault. Put the badge on, ta-da, done. Now, as long as you use an SMG, it counts towards your infantry assault. For you, because you love your pistols, you could deal with your handgun assault. Do you see what I'm saying? You're actually leveling up your infantry assault while using your, your, using your handgun. Because you absolutely freaking love your pistols. Do you see? That's a secret. I know it's a secret, but still. So, but what do you think of that idea, Pandemic? Yeah, I think that's good. That sounds good to me. I won't mind that. 
to be honest. I'd sign me right up if I wasn't already poor. <laughs> <laughs> but I on I honestly think that a lot of people would get veterancy just for that. Do you see what I'm saying? It would actually. I had more time and I had more money. I would definitely invest in veterans. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I I I honestly think now 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 if you don't have a ribbon unlocked, for example, I don't have handgun assault unlocked or parachute uh, on my infantry. You can't use it on that that ribbon because you don't have it unlocked. You have to at least have it unlocked. Okay. So you can't power level. You know what I mean? So so play people can't power level something that they don't have already unlocked. Do you see what I'm saying? That's only fair. Be more of a reason to buy it. Exactly. It would be more of a reason to buy it. And, and, and which means that's money in Ritu's pocket. Exactly. Which means they can then afford to buy, pay a decent animator. You know, so you can yeah. do the decent animations. Are getting... make it, yeah, and they can make it so that the animations are actually right, you know? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Every single time. Exactly, exactly. Now, now I've got to give them props. The weapon animations, uh, the, uh, the weapon cycling rounds and stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's impressive, you know? Because you can see the ejecting brass and stuff, yeah, you know? That's that That's impressive. That really is impressive. Um, also, I think the close combat weapon, the, the close combat badges, um, I think that, you know how it, 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 in a, a battlefield you can, you, you know, do like that quick time event where you can stab someone? And take like their that. dog tags. Like backstabbing? Yeah, like backstabbing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like that. That'd make it so that knives would actually be a bit more useful. Yeah, yeah animation and interaction. Instead. Exactly. I think that they should add, they could add something like that. And, yeah. and I'm not saying it's a blatant rip-off of Battlefield. It's not. Because they're not nicking... I mean, you you, in, you could, in theory, take the soldier's dog tag. Or, or, or maybe they can add that. You know, you know. See, and the, and the whole spoils of war system is something I would love to see put into the game. Basically, you, basically, what it is, the spoiler war system is, you you got a, a Soviet soldier using the PTRD and you kill him, okay, with the backstab mechanic, okay. You grab him, turn him around, stab him, you know, take his dog tags, you know, or whatever, and you've got his PTRD now, okay. You've got his PTRD. You set up, you start shooting, killing some tanks, killing some infantry, ha 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 ha. Game ends. You've still got this guy's PTRD. That's a spoil of war. I actually like that idea better than the picking something up and holding on to it towards the end of the game. Because then it rewards players for, well, not just walking up behind someone and shooting them in the back of the head. Yep. You see what I'm saying? You've got some... Exactly. And this is the thing. You can keep it. You can't repair it. Okay? So you can't repair the web. You can't repair the weapon. You can't sell the weapon, but it, you can then decide to equip it if you want to. Yeah. So you take out your Thompson, you take off your anti-tank grenades or whatever, and you literally, you, you take his PTRD. And you have his PTRD, and you use it until it is destroyed, because you can't repair it, okay? Because think about it, if you're using a, a Soviet weapon and you're not a Soviet soldier, you're not going to know how it's going to work. You can eventually run out of ammo with it because you'd have to be out of supply. Exactly. Do you see what I'm saying? That that's so that way the the spoils of war system can't be abused. Same as tanks. You, yeah, it happened in the war. It did. Exactly. You kill you 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 kill a German tank commander. You take his Tiger One, okay? Yep. And you stay alive. The Tiger One's not destroyed. At the end of the game, you've got the guy's Tiger One. You can't repair it. You're not designated a tanker. It goes to it goes into your vehicle listings, okay? It, yeah, and, and it's just got a great big freaking German logo on it. Because if, if you ever notice, if you look at uh, uh, when you buy like a German hand grenade or a Soviet hand grenade, it has the logo right next to it. They've even got the graphic right there. So yeah, you exactly. look look at your vehicles real quick, and right underneath there's a, there's room right there for a fourth slot. You got your Jeep, your bike, and your APC. There's room right there for a fourth slot. Captured web, captured vehicle. Captured vehicle, yeah. Captured exactly. vehicle, Tiger One. You can't, you 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 can't repair it, okay. And once it's done, it's gone. You know, once it, so say say you take it out in the battle, okay. After X amount of spawns, it's destroyed. That's it. It's gone. 
It's removed from your inventory. Do you see? Because you can't rep- you can't repair it, and you can't re- and you can't resupply it. But you can choose to spawn it in as a special vehicle. Do you see? As a spoil of war, same as a jeep. You can do it for a Kugel wagon. You can do it for a Soviet jeep, or 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 a, 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 a German APC. Do you see what I'm saying? It would mean that soldiers would actually have to care for their equipment as well. If people get annoyed about it, there maybe could be a, a paint option to paint it, even though it's an enemy vehicle. Uh huh. Paint it like they did in the war, just a little bit to notify it is that country. If you know what I mean. Yeah, like I like when they captured German tanks, they they would paint, put the American star. Yeah, on exactly. it. Yeah, exactly. yeah, exactly. And it would, and, and, and see, that's the thing. It, it, I, I, I honestly think, and and med kits. Me and Jay have said, why is there not med kits under the equipment slot? We, we just why? Just, Keep saying it. Yeah, just why? Right next to the wrench and the binoculars. Right, I mean, the the ironic thing is, have you ever actually noticed the dead GI does have a med kit on his hip? He does. He does. There's a little red cross on a pouch. He has a fucking med kit on his hip. Just make it like a... Make it like a... I make... think I do, actually. I just thought of this. First and foremost, there's a bandage that you unlock at, like, infantry assault, like, I don't know, like, maybe four. I don't know. Um, but you get it from infantry assault. Then it's a band-aid, which takes up one slot. You only get one use. You help yourself, and then either it fully heals you, but you have to, like, sit there for a second and, like, bandage up. Yeah, mm-hmm. just like a little animation. You're stuck in an animation delay. for a couple seconds yep. uh, to heal. Then it's either 100% fully back all the way back to your thing or just one thing. Yeah, uh, one bar. Then uh, using the med kits, similar to parachutes, will get you the medic ribbon up. Yep. Yep. And eventually you get a medic bag, which allows you to heal other people. Yep. But uh, it also has limited uses. Yep. But a lot more uses. Exactly. Exactly. That That's exactly what... I mean, me and you, me and you, J-Man, and Warhammer, and everyone else, since we started playing War Thunder, uh, 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 Heroes and Generals, have openly said, why the fuck do we not get med kits? You know? Squads always had a medic. You know? What's the first thing they yelled? Medic! You know? As soon as we're down. Yep. And maybe even add some death sounds. You know? For example, a GI dies. What's the first thing a GI right next to him yells? Maybe you can click F as a when you're like injured. And yeah. We'll say medic. Different button. Okay. Yeah, Instead of no. just whistling, exactly. You know? Be like, oh, fuck, True. medic! You know? Medic comes running over. You know, starts patching you up. You know? Band-aid, boom. How many people would actually be yelling medic? That'd be hilarious. <laughs> or, 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 or better yet, when someone dies to a sniper. What do they yell? Sniper! You know what I mean? Get to cover! Sniper! Get to cover! You know? Yeah, exactly. Make it seem more realistic because there's battlefield chatter. It's always nice. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, and another thing. You spot an enemy tank. You're a German. Scheiße! Panzer! You know? Yeah. The that... only battle chatter we have right now is when you get shot or the whistle. That's it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, and, I, and, I, and and that's the thing. Yeah. Re, Ritu, Ritu. I'll even do the voice work for you for free. Just send me the scripts. Just send me the scripts. I'll do it for you for free. And I'll even throw in an Easter egg. I'll even throw in an Easter egg just for you guys in the podcast and just for you guys in here in generals. Basically, when when you kill, I don't know, say four people in a row and you call over a medic, you know, and a medic comes over to heal you and they'll be like, it'll be something simple like, you know, like, thank you, Jingles, or something, you know what I mean? Just something like that, you know? Yeah, a little Easter egg or, or something like that. And... Another thing, oh, it, 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 it does bug me. It bugs me a lot. And, and I, the spotting system, I think it's fantastic, but the HUD needs an update. 
when you spot a vehicle like a Jeep, why does it have the same spot marker as a tank? Even a bike. Yeah. Why 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 can it not be spot B bike? Yeah. Spot T tank. You know? I for infantry, just anything like Or, or spot no spot V vehicle. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? That would be so much easier for our tankers to to know what to focus fire on. Do you see? And for aircraft. Yep. yep. And, and another thing, I think recon should get EXP for spotting vehicles and then getting destroyed. I think it should count towards yeah, their recon ribbon. Yeah, because that's what recon only recon so they reconnaissance. Do what they're supposed to be doing. Exactly. And right now they're getting no no experience whatsoever for doing their damn job. Whenever whenever I'm 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 playing and one guy's like, Can you go recon please? I'm like, Ugh. Because I know I'm not gonna get fuck all for kills, fuck all for EXP, and fuck all for cash. Nothing for reconnaissance. Yeah, it's fuck all. Fuck all for reconnaissance to do other than be that annoying douchebag on the other side of the river st- uh, spawn sniping. And I'm looking at you, Germans. That's that's it. That's all that's all they're gonna be. Until they actually implement a decent spotting system and upgrade the spotting HUD. Do you see what I'm saying? I I I it's just that's one of the things that gripe my it, it it really does get me because you can you you can literally just stand there, scope in, spot it, and the guy with the tank's like, what is it? It's a tank. Oh, okay. Is it moving? No. It's stationary. Yep. Bam, 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 bam. Tanks move, stop shooting. Okay. And I have to type that, which means I have to take my hand off my mouse, unscope, to tell him information that might be invalid because there's no no VOP. And frankly, I don't want to publicly advertise my team speak. I don't. The reason why I don't publicly advertise my team speak in a, in a, in a, in a game like Heroes and Generals by myself is because I don't want some half-wit playing German techno music. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't want that shit. Because I know they're just going to come in and troll. It's like, oh, uh, uh, uh. oh my God, get out. You know what I mean? Or or like like when you first used that voice changer pandemic, I was like, oh, yeah. come on, please don't be one of these. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and no, you weren't. You know, because otherwise you wouldn't be here, would you? I wouldn't have given you the, 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 yeah, exactly. you see exactly. what I'm saying? And, and yet I can't say that for 100% certainty about everyone who's going to come into my team speak. You know, I can't, I can't say that. And, and, so I've decided to to keep my team speak private and only be used uh, 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 for when I'm live streaming or when you guys want to, you know what I mean? Play whatever game and, and you need a, a, a team speak to talk, you know? Yep. Which is why I've openly said to you guys, if you guys want a team speak to talk and whatnot, no, go ahead, use it. It's there for a reason. So, do you think there should be a vo- uh, uh, a VOP added to the game? It might be preferred, like, you know, obviously you guys want that, and I don't really have a problem with it as long as you can turn it up or turn it down. But it might, unknowingly to us, we're just scrubs that don't make video games. <laughs> uh, it might be more difficult for them to make or something. Could be a variety of reasons, but I, I wouldn't say no. As long as you can turn it up and turn it down. Okay. See, now, me, I, I like how Red Orchestra's got it. In Red Orchestra, when you want to talk like on a VOP, you hold down the key to talk and only soldiers in your vicinity hear you. Ah, yes, I know what you mean. 
like red oak armor like uh a local anyone in your vicinity Westchurch. that's very sort of in a certain amount of kilometers yep. within your range yep and and another thing in red orchestra when you're talking like on a vop and enemy soldiers are near you they can hear you yeah I think that would be awesome too. If they add something like that, I think that would be awesome too. Well, we're at the 45 minute mark, guys. So my podcast is pretty much coming to an end. So if you guys want to plug your YouTube channels or whatnot, go ahead. I'll do that. I haven't used mine long enough. <laughs> Mine's just Dr. Pandemics. Dr. Pandemics, youtube.com slash... Slash Dr. Pandemics. Okay, guys. Sure, yeah. Mine would be the J-Man 1606. That's and there you go. J-Man 1606. I'd like three YouTube channels. <laughs> well, anyway, guys, I want to thank you for listening to this audio podcast. Um, again, guys, thank you so much. You guys are awesome. And as always, I like to end my podcasts with a stay safe, have fun, keep your shows flying, keep your enemies dying. Your Cobra Commander is out, and I'll see you bitches in the next one, my uh-huh. friends.